status as usual demos i have four demos and matteo matteo will also have demos um, localization localization date um, um, then there is one pr i want uh, some discussion uh, around it should be simple so that's good because it's his code that will remove <laughs> um, then what else other demos anyone has a demos apart from Matteo um, good okay status 01 01 01 01 seven days I see eight days here let's see maybe it was committed before and merged only eight days ago or committed eight days ago and merged that last week we saw that it was about handling um, PO files which are invalid not failing on this line this is this is on dev branch um, theory fixing um, well refactoring how the event handlers are called here for cloning and clone using the helper method we have um, and uh, that's it. Uh, this one on one ten x delete schedule task when content is published. Um, so the ID it's from Rob, or maybe someone from Bit Gaming. But Rob, I think, made the PR. Uh, the issue was that when you um, delete a, when you publish a content item, you want to delete the task which will actually publish it later. Okay. Uh, sort taxonomy terms failed. This was an issue with paging and sorted terms in the UI in the admin. From theory, fixed from theory. Uh, content picker localization option discussed. So this one we saw the demo last week. Um, this is about implementing the changes that we uh, designed for the content picker and localization. So as a reminder, now you can. Um, filter the items per culture on the, the content picker and also you have many options on the field to limit what items or what cultures you can select like matching culture from the content item and also automatic translation of the selected content item. Um, this one is some um, feedback I think we gave to Matteo that implemented I can't remember that's actually the the culture picker for the content picker uh, pop up. Okay. It, it yeah, the drop down. PRs. Okay. Good. This one we talked about um, a few months ago, um, which is that the tag cache storage should be the same as the cache storage. It was not the case. The cache tag was was um, was 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 on a concurrent dictionary. Um, and now it's part of um, the same cache uh, property of the HTTP context. This way, when you have a tenant restart, it will clear the tag cache also. It was just clearing the cache and not the tag cache, and there was a conflict. So that is fixed. Um, actually, if we are using a cache, then why don't we use the business cache? No, this is for output cache. Oh, you mean why don't we use the... Yeah, no, no, there are different providers. Uh, I, I I get that. I just uh, don't understand. Okay, maybe you're right. Let's see. Yeah. If, if we change this uh, to use the HTTP cache, then we could have also changed it to use the uh, business cache, so what is the caching? Um, or or some, some external cache manager. So, so uh, it also works in a farm scenario. So the ITAC oh. cache needs needs to get the same storage as the output cache. So if you use a feature like output cache, because this is a feature, right? Output cache has a default feature. The default feature has a default output cache storage provider and also a default tag cache. These two defaults should match the same storage. In this case now, the cache. If now you use a different storage provider for the output cache, you need to provide the tag cache for this storage provider and the output cache for this storage provider. For instance, Redis.
Okay, so the only difference uh, that um, that the author wanted to achieve here was uh, resilience to every star. So his, his bug was that he was using a default output cache and he was doing a tin entry start at some point. And, but the um, tag cache was not cleared. So it was pointing to content items in, ca in cache which were not in cache because, you see what you see? Oh no, it was the opposite. The tag cache was re re cleared, but not the cache itself. So then the items will not get updated because the tag cache didn't know about these items. The issue okay. being, they, need, they both needed to be consistent. So how did one of them persist uh, beyond a restart? Uh, because um, it's using HTTP context, you see here, and this thing is not cleared on the tenant restart. This one was cleared on the tenant restart. So the HTTP context cache is something that survives the tenant restart? Yes, because the app doesn't restart. Ah, okay. Good. Oh my God, the level of discussion when Daniel Ezoltan is here. Um, bug reading site settings from the route class. Uh, bug reading site setting from the route class. So he's wrapping um, the route initialization in the same work context in the in the default orchard shell because we had um, a new scope at some point and this item could use some service so needed also to be wrapped in the same work context. So here you see there was a new work context was created. It's just using the, the one that was before in the same uh, method. Um, implements, what's this? Oh, that's a very good <laughs> title. I missed this one. I should have fixed it. Um, what is this? Request tokens. Okay, this is uh, um, new tokens for the request, being able to change them. And I asked MS that to check everything was, um, all the unit tests were passing and he checked, so that's fine. Zoltan also, I think, saw the, the change he commented on for request. Uh, fixing tenant name validation regex, yes. And I missed that. Fortunately, Matteo didn't miss that. While we fix this thing, and we also commented on the PR because there were some issues, we missed this backslash. So this Actually, backslash we missed it as well, but it didn't work today. So yeah, I, I saw that. I should yeah. Well, ah, so I will pull the PR on Thursday. That's a very small f fix to do, yeah. um, or before if I'm not that lazy. Do you have questions? No questions. Um, so that's it. Orchard 2. Um, or maybe let's f f focus on Orchard 1 and also do the demos for Orchard 1. Actually, let me, because we talked about localization and now we want to see. Uh, so for those who, who, who missed the, the previous weeks, um, and maybe actually I had a question for you guys, uh, Matteo and Hermes. Maybe you could explain more what you're doing because you've been pretty active the last few weeks and months on localization. For those who missed it, we made multiple design meetings for localization and had very great ideas. And Matteo and Hermes are working a lot on, on that. And well, Matteo, Hermes, and now you get two or three more contributors on the PRs like Giuseppe and whoever. Um, so, can one of you, Matteo or MS, explain who you are, what is laser, and what you are doing? Yeah, I'd actually leave Hermes the explaining who we are. Uh, <laughs> Hermes is the boss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we are working a lot on uh, on uh, how localization work in, in Orchard because uh, we have a lot of problems uh, around the localization. So we we worked on um, culture culture picker field uh, like uh, as um, Matteo demos uh, last week. 
Yeah, yeah, we know what you are doing for with well, we know with that, what you are doing in Orchard. The question is, what is laser and what are you doing with Orchard? How do okay. you use Orchard and what is laser? What is your company? Uh, laser is an IT uh, company working in Italy, and uh, we are uh, we. We write code in order to uh, expose uh, Orchard contents for a mobile application. Okay, good. And you use and, a lot and of also, localization. And also for website. Website. Okay. okay, thank you. Matteo, you can share when you want. Yeah, uh, I actually forget how to share the screen. <laughs> Same button. So you see my screen? I do. You see here? I don't see the mouse pointer. Oh, yeah, yeah. there you go. This Found one. It. Yeah. Do that. OK. Uh, OK, I'm going to interrupt you. That's good. That's what I'm asking for. Right. Is the monitor? Yes. Sure. Right. So as I was saying, we we need a lot of localization because most of our clients require at least two languages, often three, for their uh, websites and for their apps, basically. <clears throat> so we really need to have everything working in, uh, in three languages at the same time with all, that, with all that entails. So as you were saying, Sebastian, in the past few weeks, we've had a few meetings. We, we started really working on this for 110X. And uh, so what I wanted to show today is a part of what we think as a big localization feature. And what, what I did in the past few days is the localization sets that we discussed. So basically using an ID to properly um, group contents, which are translation localization one of the other. Uh, because what we found out is that using the master content ID had several drawbacks, and the services that were that were based on the on the master content ID behaved in some unexpected ways, let's say. And then I will also show the cloning. Uh, the cloning is a feature that's already in Dev for Orchard, but uh, I pulled it back. And uh, I try to make it retrocompatible with one ten X because we think we we really need the cloning uh, to be able to do proper uh, localization for our clients. So, so this is something that we've actually been asked. So when uh, when our client clicks uh, on the new translation button, it doesn't want to fill everything in the content in the new content that's created. It wants to to have all the information being carried over from the one they're starting from. Uh, so in this tenant I, I've set up here, uh, the cloning is not yet used for the localization. Because first... Can I just interrupt you one second? I just want to set up the context. So cloning is already in Orchard 110X, and Zoltan knows about it because he made it. And today in 110X, cloning is based on import-export. So we export the content and we import it with the issues that some things need to be changed during cloning, and we don't support that. The only thing that is supported is, I think there is just the identity or something else, or there is a copy, a dash copy, which is added to the identity. Okay, that's the only thing we do. Mm -hmm. So uh, Thierry Fleury uh, made a PR to fix that and to make a clone and a cloning event on the content handlers, so that any driver can implement cloned and cloning and then define a custom behavior for clone and cloning. For instance, the identity will just generate a new grid, and uh, the other things will just duplicate their content, okay, like they do for import and export. And this thing has been done in dev because there was a breaking change um, in the interface. So Matteo worked on backporting the same changes, making them in one tenex without anything breaking. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I just want to add that basically uh, to the way we did that was to enable a sort of fallback mechanism. So if uh, if for a part or field there is no cloning implemented, the the actual cloning will fall back in using uh, export import as it is right now in one ten x. So uh, for this demo, so uh, 
Localization sets. Uh, localization sets basically mean that when I do new translations of a content, uh, here I have I created a, an English language content. I'll do the Italian and the French localization, if it opens. That's being live. All okay. uh, right, so this is the English variation. Uh, as I was saying, right now, the cloning is not in the translation, so you see this is an empty one. So I'll do the French version, right, and I'll publish it. And then I am in the French version, and I'll do the Italian version. I'll show you in the DB what this does. In the DB, you'll see I had my English version, and then I made the other two versions, right? So you see that the, the main difference here is that, uh, I don't know if you actually can see it, yeah, it's fine. Okay. The main difference is that the localization set is uh, shared, same, for all these three contents, while the master content you see is different. So this, the, the item I started from has master content ID 0, because, it, of course, it has no master, it is its own master, while the others depend on the first one. And this is something we found to be, well, some, somewhat weird. Uh, this was probably easier to handle, and what we found was also that sometimes when you do, you, we did chain translations, so we started from, uh, let's say, English content, did the French one, and then after a while, starting from the French one, we did the Italian one, the master content would not be the same for them, but it would, it would basically be the French one for the Italian one. And I think we can see that um, here. You see, item 18, the master content is 17, whose master content is 13, but they are in the same localization set. So that solved that. And we re basically re-implemented the localization services based on the lo on logics around the, the translation set ID. Uh, we try to, get, to keep this retro compatible. Uh, so basically, all that was being done with the master content ID, uh, it's still there. So the master content ID is still being managed the same way, and the service that used the master content ID is still there as well. So basically, we made available an alternative to that, and we kept the old version uh, for the compatibility, because if someone has already built their system around the logics, and the service is based on master content ID, we didn't want to change that. So yeah, another thing this, that is, this is the only reason why we need the column because we talked about using the same column, master content item ID, and fixing it by using the same ID. Like the first content item created has itself as a master content item ID, and all others will have all again the same master content item ID. But mm -hmm. as you said, if someone is using this colon with this this weird behavior, then we don't want to break that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you remember, I also had an issue uh, which I posted that, that I couldn't reproduce, where I would get duplicate duplicate languages, uh, and I haven't got it yet with the services based on translation set. So that may be a plus. Um, cloning then. So this uh, tenant also has the cloning feature uh, that you, you were, we were saying earlier, we basically backported from that. And so let's say, let me clone this one. So right now what it does, it basically clones everything. It uses uh, the cloning uh, drivers where it finds them. If it doesn't find the cloning driver, it's going to use the, um, what's its name? The export input logics. Um, so yeah, it's really hard to see here, I guess. But that's what it's doing. And of course, it's creating a draft content here. So you see, I can publish it. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you yes. show the interface that we changed? The, yeah, of course. Because it, right. the, to be able to backport the 
the event handler changes, like a clone and cloning method. For sure, it's a new method, so it's breaking the interface. So what Matteo did is a new interface, okay, on one 10x again, which is called I clone content handler, something like that. Yeah. And inherits from I content handler and adds two inter two methods on the interface, which means anything today which works with I content handler is not touched at all. And it's, if you sorry. want to implement your sorry, custom. Sorry, it's actually on the driver, not on the handler. Just on the driver? Yeah, yeah, because the handler already had the cloning and clone method. Okay. So just I only had to do the driver for this. Good. Yeah, but go ahead. I mean, no, that's that. I think that's it. And then yeah, if you implement this custom interface, if you want to implement these methods, uh, yeah. so that's opt-in, and you made it for the things that needed to be done this way. Yeah. And in the dev branch, we are not changing it. We will remove this interface on the dev branch. So on the dev branch, we need to put all the things which are on this interface into the default one, which is currently the case already. So this mm -hmm. is a breaking change, but it's a good breaking change. It's not more breaking than what is currently on dev, actually. So I, I was yeah. going to ask about that. When you, when you merge forward this one to dev, uh, yeah. you'll have two solutions for the same thing. So, so you'll no, no, we will three. remove this one. The breaking oh, change will be okay. to remove this new interface, right? which is the, already done. Yeah. Oh, OK. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, j just a thing. So basically, this is for the field drivers, and uh, content field driver now implements the new interface, which uh, which inherits from the original one. So basically, you still have everything you had from the i content field driver, and on top of that, you have the two methods from the cloning uh, interface that I cannot find now. This actually, this has actually been changed for the synchronization. Uh, so there is one more process method. I will, I will come to that in a, in a second. Uh, and the, the big, the biggest change really was in the co driver coordinators. So if I go to the cloning methods here, there is the fallback logic. So basically, if it's not able to find the cloning implementation for whatever you're trying to clone, it will fall back into an export import. And this will follow the same, basically the same cloning logic that's there already in one x Only it, instead of doing it for the whole item, it's going to do it part by part or and field by field. Um, so for the synchronization, uh, this is the tenant. Yes. So synchronization. You are talking about synchronization now, and again, I want to explain to people what it is because it's yeah. not obvious when you're not into it. Uh, so you remember about localization and fields? We talked many times uh, how we can make fields be culture neutral, like the same value should be the same on every uh, translation of a content item. Uh, and the solution we designed was to synchronize the field content for every content item. Meaning, if you change the field value. And this field is culture not whole in a localization content item, then the value on publish will be put on the other localizations of the same content item. So we are synchronizing the fields across the localizations. That's the idea. Across the translation set. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I will open these three contents that we, we created. They are in the same localization set. So we just pick one. Right now you see, this is the original one I had. So I, I have uh, written something in these fields. I have written, basically in every part and every field, there's something. And these are the new ones. So they only have the title populated. This one and this one as well. Now, uh, what I did for synchronization, I created a new feature for culture network synchronization. So let me just enable that. What this does is it provides settings for parts and fields, uh, basically to tell the system which part and which field is um, culture natural. Now, they behave a little bit differently uh, in the sense for parts, uh, let's say we want to have the, the title part to be culture natural for whatever reason. So for parts, what we do is we go into the part definition and you see there is a new allow synchronization check. Uh, uh, this is a part definition level setting that allows, that basically enables setting this part 
to be culture neutral in any given type. Uh, what I mean by that is that if I enable this, it goes there, then I open my demo type, and you see oh, that didn't work. I'm sorry. Did I actually enable it? I didn't say that because I'm bad. Yeah, okay. I'll make a change to save that setting. I clearly missed something. Okay, so let me just show things for the fields. Um, so for fields, you see we have the culture net neutral setting, which I will enable in this field, and will not enable in this one. So I'll save. Uh, what this means, this means basically is that this field will be will propagate to the localization set. The changes to this field when I publish will be propagated to the localization set, where well, this one will not. Um, so what I would expect is that if I publish now, in all the parts, in all the sorry, in all the items for the localization set, that field will pop be populated in I. So let me just make sure this works. That was saved, and hopefully it will work. Yep. So you see the field will propagate through. So, and I and don't remember exactly what logic has been decided, but it was uh, deeply thought, uh, which is to so which the, versions do we synchronize the items of the user localizations? Yeah, to published and latest. Okay. So right now these three were all published. Let me just create a latest version. So we'll just say, we delete this and we'll save it so it's not published. So this change I made will not propagate on the others because I didn't publish that content, right? So now I publish this one and see this is now the draft version. And each will have the field that's been propagated. Does it make sense? Yep. Well, <laughs> we designed it, so yes, for me, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Sorry about the setting for the part. I clearly, I'm clearly not saving correctly something. Um, yeah, I'll have to check it. Yeah, and uh, also add that because I, well, because I could basically, uh, the allow synchronization and culture natural commands, well, commands methods to be called uh, in migrations when we are creating parts and types and whatnot. So we can set everything in the migration. Yeah, that's very good. Very, very good. Good job. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, um, specifically for Zoltan, because I know he worked on that. Yeah. Uh, taxonomy localization, that's your next work, right? Yeah, uh, actually, Hermes worked on that already. Good. Uh, I don't know if he finished, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to to just add something. I mean, just, just sure. add something to the discussion about the, the translation, uh, because the, our next step, personally, would be to have uh, the cloning behavior when we are doing new translation of a content. And uh, basically it's similar to what's in the, what the Riflery did in dev, uh, because he has something like that. What we were thinking though was to, instead of straight up using cloning, uh, use basically translating mm -hmm. methods that would fall back on cloning if none is implemented. Basically like we did for, clo for cloning that falls back to export-import, we would like to do translating the falls back to cloning just because it looks cleaner and it, I think it makes more sense to yeah, just implement that separate. We, when we talked about it, we decided to pass a property culture with a clone. So you can clone in a specific culture, which means translate. So you I don't know, have to. I know, but the, 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 the issue is with that, I, I saw an issue with that later on when I implemented the fallback. Because to implement the fallback basically in, my screen went off, okay. When I implemented the fallback, um, basically what I'm doing is I'm checking if cloning is implemented, and that would pose a problem when, when I'm implementing a cloning that's only really a translating, because then nothing would happen on cloning. 
why nothing will happen actually i don't get Be because the, the fallback sorry let me just open the cover well the fallback see. just has the same job it doesn't take into account the the culture that's fine the second well yes but suppose no sorry this is not a file this is the file so you see here what i did is if it's a cloning driver i'll check if it has implemented the cloning method If it has implemented the cloning method, and if it has not, oh, it's bad. Uh, that's so ugly. Uh, super ugly. I don't like it. Yeah. This is wow. super ugly. I don't want to see that. Close it. <laughs> um, no, you just call it, and the default implementation is the fallback. Done. Mm. Yeah, we'll find a solution. I don't want to see that. Okay. <laughs> there are some other. Nice ways to handle that, I'm sure. That must be. But that's no. Nope. Obfuscated because the bastard doesn't understand it. Yeah. Sorry? No, 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 don't worry. We'll talk about it offline and we'll find a, a better solution. Uh, okay, sure. at, at least to find the method that is implemented or not. Well, that's fine. But then the translation is a different story. There are two issues here. We'll talk about it offline. That's fine. Okay, cool. You, you touched uh, briefly on the, what versions you synchronize to. Did you say that you synchronize to the published one and the latest draft? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around what that means. That's beautiful. Uh, if, we, you, so if, you, if you have a draft, why do you want to synchronize to the... Because, because then this draft will be published. And if you don't synchronize it, you will publish an old value to all users. Yeah. But why? And, and they have to be the same. To the published one. Because if they are published and you're publishing another one, they have to be the same. So you're also published to the published ones. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. You should have come to us to these meetings, beautiful meetings, two or three hours of meetings. <laughs> I, I <would> <laughs> all, all these issues and crazy. And late at night for us. Yeah, very early for me. Uh, <laughs> and we also designed the taxonomy. So Zoltan, you, if you could read the, the design notes for taxonomy localization, we found solutions to have um, taxonomy localization in the core of taxonomy. Very simple also. All the um, scenarios handled and that's beautiful. Uh, so you should read it. Good, cool. perfect. Has this yeah, stuff like been, uh, been committed into 110X already? What has been merged is the content uh, field picker changes. The the, sync, the cloning is a PR which is active right now. And yep. I will take a look at this reflection code. Uh, the cloning solves two issues. The cloning solves the fact that, well, you can clone nicely. It also solves the fact that when you click on a new translation, we can clone the item to pre-fill everything with the current values, which we broke in 1.9 or 1.10. And it also lets um, Matteo implement the fields synchronization by cloning the fields themselves. So the cloning is the PR which will allow three other things. Yeah. And uh, sorry, uh, let me add, the, there's also a PR for the localization sets that's separate from cloning and everything. It's already, it's already been pushed. Mm -hmm. It's not in one next, but the PR is there. Yeah, and the localization set is necessary for this thing and taxonomy and to make localization robust because there, there were there are issues right now with uh, master content that MID. It's not logical. And and we have to keep them because we would break things otherwise. I have a question for Matteo. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, for the part settings, Matteo. Yeah. Can, can I see again uh, how, how can I set uh, the synchronization? Yeah, it actually doesn't work right now because I broke it apparently. Uh, the idea is there is a part definition setting, which is allow synchronization. And then at the content type level, for the single part, you will have a culture natural setting like for fields. Mm -hmm. That's actually, you don't have the setting if you don't allow synchronization of the part in the part definition. Okay. So, so you the, allow the synchronization and then in the setting of the part for the content type, you can synchronize. Exactly. Okay. 
you, you can tell it to synchronize that part for that type. For that type, okay. Yeah. That's why do you need this thing here? Sorry, these two why levels need... of things. Yeah, why not just show it on every type part? Because I I f really feel that some parts we will most likely not want to synchronize. It's an option, it's an option but then you don't check. You don't need a checkbox to show the checkbox. That's weird. In this case, there are many ways, many cases where you would like to a checkbox to show the checkbox. But in mm -hmm. this case, I'm, I, it's not obvious. I mean, no, you just show the, the type part checkbox then. Okay. That's, that's uh, it. I think it also is a little uh, confusing that they're named such different things. Yeah, a low synchronization. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's studio. Uh, allow the checkbox to say the thing. Yeah, no. yeah, allow culture neutral or something yeah. would be more. But, well, remove allow synchronization checkbox okay. and type on definition. Just call it culture neutral part. Boom, like like you did for the field or something like this. Yeah, that'd be best. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Just make a note of that. But just nitpicking. Thank you very much, Matteo, for the work. Good work. Thank you. Uh, everything is good, but this uh, reflection code. I will look at it. Um, that's okay. Share my, my desktop. Uh, Orchard 2. Uh, clone. So beautiful. Beautiful. It's perfect. Um, so, 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 so. Orchard 2. What happened? Um, so Nick, starting with Nick, uh, Nick merged his pull request for refactoring the extensions uh, support, like loading modules, features. He did some refactoring on the, the API. A lot of refactoring, like 150 files have changed, but that works. That's, that has been merged yesterday. Um, this is that you're working on um, OAuth2 branch still. So this is Nick working on this branch. Uh, this is, I will spare you the details. I will go directly to the merged branches. Um, what did I miss here? Yes. Jean Thierry is still working on improving the shape table and it's working perfectly. He's just trying different approaches now to make the performance even better. As a reminder, it's about caching the shape tables, the shape table descriptor, so they can be shared across tenants. And uh, he's now trying them with many, many tenants also to, to see the impact in memory and in perf, in loading perf. So that's the work uh, going on um, to be merged very soon. Um, this I will show, the scene I will show, extension info is the branch that we merged from Nick. Uh, I will show you the search module called Lucene. Uh, this is a branch I created. Um, Antoine is also following it, apparently. I'm trying to see what it takes to create a blog on Orchard 2, so fixing every single thing that are blocking to create a blog. Theming, uh, comments, whatever. <clears throat> Looking at all the issues we can find, but it's a uh, side work. Uh, initialize, I think, is, is, is refactoring of the initialize method in default or sure host to be async. Um, the search module, home page, I will show you. Um, run as a service is a branch that uh, Sergio has created. He managed to make Orchard 2 run as a service, as a Windows service. And with commands to you say .NET run as a service and it starts the service, Orchard as a service. I asked him to create a wiki page to explain his solution instead of creating it directly into um, the web project. And uh, the reasons to do a Windows service and also how to make it work. So anyone can create their own project and make them a service, make it a service. Um, site settings and fixing the CI. So demos, demos, demos. First demo I have is get item aspect. We talked about it last week. It's about refactoring how we get the metadata and not only get the metadata, but get any kind of metadata. So it's completely extensible. Uh, so Bertrand had a good idea which appear to be very complex in the end and not really work as I expected. But now I have, a, based on what he gave me, I have a good solution, I think, which is, for instance, uh, let's say title wants to implement the get metadata. We'll go to the handler, which implements now 
get content item aspect. So it's not get item meta data. You just implement get content item aspect. Okay, and this method will be called just for the title part because it's on the content part handler. Okay, and there from the content item aspect context, you say for content item metadata. So you can provide an aspect of the content item, which is content item metadata. And then you define the value in this content item metadata, in this case, display text. Another example is, um, why did I do it for? I can't remember. What was the point of having that? Because I wanted more metadata. What was it? Let me see. Uh, let me see where it's used. It was last week. Uh, list, let's see list. What do we have in list? Yes, for instance, this one will provide the road values. The body will provide the, ah, yes, for search index. Okay, now I get it. Uh, body aspect. So if you want to say that your content has a body or can provide the body information, we used to have iBody part in um, Orchard 1. But it doesn't work the same way in Orchard 2 because parts are not uh, first level concept, they are just dynamic. So here we just say, can you provide a body? And the same way as content item metadata, we say, yes, this guy, body part, can provide a body. The body is an HTML string of body from the part. Okay? And this way you can ask for any part, any field, any content item, any handler you want. You can provide different aspects. Okay? Some will be core to the CMS, like body aspect is a core aspect, like we have a localization aspect, a title aspect, things like that. Uh, and this way you can provide your custom ones, okay? With the same method, get content item aspect. Metadata is an aspect. It could be split into different kind of metadata, like routing aspect, or uh, title, or display text aspect, and so on. It can be done uh, later. But this, this works this way now. And uh, I like it. It's simple and extensible. I assume there is no question about it. So this is the first thing. Um, second thing I want to show you is the search. So the app is running. Is it the correct? Mm, yes, the app is running. So uh, compared to last week, um, everything is working now with listen.net. Uh, so I can add an index and call it search. And what is new here is that I can reset and rebuild the um, the index. And this is something we could do actually in Orchard 1, but we have to extend the interface. Reset and rebuild. The difference is rebuild, like in Orchard 1, will delete completely the index and recreate the items one by one. Okay. The issue is rebuild is like uh, while it's being rebuilt, if you do some search queries, you will get no results or half of the results. So it's completely inconsistent. Reset is different. Reset will reset the cursor to the first content item to process, but won't delete the index. So all the search query will still work. Your site will still be running. But what it will do is it will reprocess every content item one by one to update the index or delete entries if the content item was removed. So it will just do an update of the index, okay, a soft update. So I think this is, uh, this is interesting to have the two here. Uh, delete will delete the index and query will now let you query the index. Why do we have it? Is because in Orchard 1, it was using Lucene 3, uh, which we had look.net, uh, a client tool to, in, to inspect the, the index. With Lucene.net Core, it's based on Lucene 4.8, and it's a new file system. And we don't have any application on Windows to do that, or non-Java. OK, sorry. Um, so I made a little screen to query with a Lucene query. Okay, the default one is this one, which will um, fetch all the content. Item. Oh, I, I don't have any content item. Sorry, let me create a content item. Article one, body, um, lorem, ipsum. Okay, I will publish it. It's published. And if I go to site, list indexes, and uh, reset is used less, it will do that. I just need to wait for it to be indexed. Oh, done. Okay, it's indexed. So if I look at all the content time, it shows me this is article one. And I can click, click on it to go to the edit box, or I can show the fields for this document. Okay, content item ID. So these are 
only the stored content uh, fields actually there are, I don't see the non stored ones I have to check that but you can see here display text content item ID um, uh, all the information that you might need uh, and and then you can because you know the fields you can do directly a, a query there so that I have a, a link to some examples for the scene but you could do something like uh, in this field uh, show me the value uh, article and it works and if I say show me the value foo then nothing appears so you can do a full listing query if you want okay and this thing is a link showing all the results is a link so you just have to click to see all the indexed content item okay so I think it's very useful um, it can be improved in many ways but at least we have a way to to see what's the status of the the index directly from the, the UI um, something also that we have now is oh I made a search page because when you come to the search page that's the goal if you go and search you have the field there are no such results if I search for lorem doesn't work <laughs> oh I know why I know why I know why if I search for article I know why because I need to go to the content type definition go to article and say that I want to index the title okay say if there is still an issue with bootstrap it's a bootstrap bug I've find the issue uh, I can save it and I can go to the body also I include this element yes this is checked I can save it and now if I go to the site with index I can reset it because I want it to be reprocessed um, and at some point it will it will reprocess it and then I will be able to do the search but the search works and the search page already supports multiple uh, indexes like we have in Orchard 1 exactly the same thing um, what I don't have right now is the settings for what type in which index something to, to improve uh, but that's all about it the, the main difference again I said it last week is that there is no search module it's a Lucene module and Lucene provides the search page using Lucene the search API to do Lucene queries it's Lucene okay we use Lucene if you want to use another search engine to do stuff then create another module create another page for the search that will use your thing and uh, with the options you want and um, what is reused here is the indexing module which let, helps you to index each content item and do the resetting of the cursor and uh, process all the content items which are in the system that's it but so why is everything is listed here so you can resolve Lucene index provider and get uh, for instance this is a helpful service that uh, lets you you see you see you see do some search it will just let you let you use the index searcher from a scene and do whatever you want with that or do a read and grant you access to directory reader which will just let you do whatever you want with the reader and that's it do any query whatever you want okay uh, so that's the idea completely extensible because it's full it's just lucene bare lucene um, so that's uh, it with indexing then I worked on the home page uh, feature so I integrated it into the auto route and if I go to content types article and I go to the auto route part you can check this option show home page options check to allow the content items of this content type to be set as the home page okay it will only be visible to users with the appropriate permission because you I need the permission so I save this and now if I go to my article I have this checkbox set as home page okay like in Arch one and if I check it only when it will be published it will be set as the home page so if I publish now um, I see I can't remove the home page okay I can just set something else as the home page but it will tell you this content item is the current home page okay exactly like in Arch one. Um, the permalink is not set because I didn't define a pattern I should have now, probably um, it doesn't matter but just it's simple so slug is the token to generate um, to use the slug from the title uh, I also created a new token which is based on containers so you can also for blog posts for instance you can depend, depend on the 
container of the item. So if I go and content items and I publish it again because it's empty, it will be regenerated using the slug. Okay. And if I go now to, it's still the home page. Okay. If I go to content items and I look at the view URL, it's the home page now. I click on it and you see, I go on the home page and this is the article which is the home page. And it also still has the article one, article one, because it is route. It's just the home page will go to this content item also. Okay. And this is the home page gets um, uh, over any other route uh, if um, you try to render the link to article one. This is why the view link here goes to the home page. So let's see home page feature. And uh, finally, what I did yesterday was the uh, site settings UI. So if you go to design and settings, now you see general to see the general properties like in Orchard One when you click on settings. I just implemented the, the text editor for the site name. All the other properties are not, don't have the editor, but you also have that uh, settings search because I need settings for search where you can define which index to use for the search index, which will be used on the front end by default when you don't provide a search index in the name, and also to define the default search fields, which I need if I want my search on the front end to work. This one, save, and now if I go on search and I search for lorem, it works. And if I search for foo, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, so that's the idea. So what is interesting here is that this is a module, the site settings module, that lets you define, like in Ultra One, some groups when you define the, the settings uh, to display the different uh, sections. Okay, I call them setting sections, configuration sections. And um, but differently from Ultra One, uh, the site is not a content item. Okay, you can't, and you don't have to draft them or. Uh, go back to the history or whatever. So it's just a document. And because it's very easy to reuse the, the, the UI composition uh, from the theming engine now in Ultra 2, um, I just made a custom driver for the settings, which is called. Um, so in this case, you just implement site settings display driver. Okay. And this one will be called um, globally on the site settings, or you could you can have a site settings section display driver where you pass a type, and then for instance this is what I did for search. Uh, for search here, where is search? It's called Lucin. Confused now. So this one you see is a setting section display driver for Lucin settings, which is a custom Poco object, and um, and this is just a simple driver with edit update. There is no display in this case. Edit update, you return a shape and you update it like any content part driver, but for site setting sections. Okay. Um, and, and the idea is that when you define a, a shape on a site setting, you also define a group, like in this case, search. And for the other one, this is very interesting. The other one is interesting. This one, this driver applies to anything because it's not for a section, it's for anything. So it will return a site settings edit on the group name general. Okay. And it will also define a save button shape on the group name group ID. So whatever group ID is requested for the current uh, view will be used to render the save button. This is why when I go on the search group, it shows the search button. And when I go on the general group, it also shows the save button because this shape is display whatever the group ID is, uh, is requested. Okay. Um, and apparently I broke the site name. So there's a bug somewhere. I have to check that. Um, uh, that's it. Uh, also, also to define the, the, the localization and the listing of the groups, what I changed is that now there is a custom service for that. A custom provider. It's called site settings group provider. You resolve that and you can add, say, oh, this is a group, available group, and this is a text to use. Okay, this is independent from your driver. You don't, it doesn't reuse the ID to try to translate it. It's a custom text and it's uh, not in the driver. It's a, 
some configuration you define in the in the, in the startup. And this way we can render nice menus here that are translated um, text, explicit text. And when you click, it will go with the correct group. Okay. Um, that's all I think for demos on my side. How do I remove that? Question? Go. Okay. Yep. Um, the, it, it's always kind of bothered me that the Lucene module is just called Lucene and not Orchard.Lucene. Is there a reason for that? Well, I, uh, because it was this, this way in Orchard 1. <laughs> Uh, I, while we talked about it and we decided what to do, I don't remember. I know for jQuery, for instance, it's called Orchard.jQuery. Uh, yeah, this one could be called Orchard.Lucene or, I don't know, yeah. We can, it can also be called search and just say, well, search is Lucene, but I wanted to expose it's Lucene because maybe someone wants to do a Azure search or Elastic search or whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, right now I really don't care, but if you think we should, start with a new name for that, or you call it Orchard.Lucene, I'm fine too. It would appeal to my OCD somehow. Yeah. I don't disagree somehow, but we should look into the meeting we, where we talked about it and we decided to do things this way. Maybe we decided to change it. I don't know what we decided, I don't remember. In Orchard 1, I, I, I always just figured it was because of some historic reason that you know, it was misnamed at some point, and then we couldn't change it. But I figured as we as we move to Orchard Two, it's kind of an opportunity to to start fresh. Yep. What did I miss? Home page? Have you? Sh I showed it. I showed the home page. Didn't you see it? It's beautiful. You missed it? Mm, yep. Oh, so sad. Look. Content items. I made article one the home page. So when you click on view, it's the home page. Beautiful. Uh, oh, next step. Okay, two things, two things. I want to, to show two things while I'm here. Uh, this pull request. Click on it. This pull request is f oh, from Hermes. I, I didn't remember it was from. Okay. This pull request is to add so attachment logic to the email provider. Okay. So you can add attachments to email. Good. That works. But it also contains a change in the test email view, which is also adding an attachment. So the idea is that when you test your email settings, it will send you a predefined attachment. So you can check that you receive attachments. Um, and it triggers the question, which is, well, when I want to test my SMTP settings, I want just to test to see if it works. I don't care about receiving an attachment with a test email. I assume that if I, if Orchard sends email, and support attachment, yes, it will send the attachment. So the test uh, screen, the test SMTP setting screen is the goal to test if SMTP is working. I mean, if email as a, as a thing is working, I can receive attachments, I can receive a two, a CC, a BCC, a whatever, a response from, a response to, all the things, or is just to check that the SMTP settings I typed actually are correct and I will receive emails when emails are supposed to be sent. Which one of the two is it? Nobody. My conviction is that this screen is to test that the SMTP settings you typed are correct and will work when email will be used in workflows and everywhere. That's my assumption. People are saying things. Uh, and yes, that's exactly the point. We are not, this, this screen is not to test that everything works in the email feature, uh, but uh, to see that SMTP settings work. So I will be like, okay, just why not then? So then we don't need this attachment value when we test SMTP settings. Doesn't hurt, but I mean, what for? Uh, people could say that it's broken when it, I don't know. Um, why do, do, don't we just have then, um, for test SMTP settings, a text box with the two 
to send the email to someone to check that, to myself, for instance, to check that I actually received the value and the settings are correct and remove everything else. So we will just have a to field and send. Okay, send me an email. Okay, I received it, my setting works. Uh, I didn't receive it, then okay, I need to change my settings. They don't work. That's, uh, that's the idea. Yeah. So, if you have to do something in the pull request, I got one yes and no, no. So, it's one against zero. Plus, my voice is alpha voice, one point half against zero. Okay, it's democratic vote. So, I think we, we win. Or maybe we have uh, some very powerful electors here. Oh, we have Sipke. Whatever we said, Sipke can decide. So, Sipke, what do you decide? Even though the popular vote is 1.5 to zero. Sorry, that's what we are voting for. That, well, joking. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry. Just say you agree with us. You know, I always agree. With Thank you. Me. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I will comment on the pull request MS, but uh, what you could do then instead, instead of adding more things, is removing all the stuff from so, the file. So, so, so I have to remove uh, all things. I so, keep only the two. Yes, so, correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, second comment, uh, I changed the wiki roadmap on Orchard 2. Yep, oh, one, thing. Uh, one thing, Sebastian. Uh, or, um, if you remove everything except the two field, um, mm -hmm. then it would be very nice if either the body of the text message or the subject contains the tenant name. The tenant name? Yeah. Okay. From which you're sending the te test message. I don't. I, I'm not opposed to it. What is the reason? Do you have a scenario in mind? Um, yeah, when you. Uh, wait, hmm, yeah, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> because we can use any custom information in the. in this field, but. Um, I, just, yeah. I just figured if it just says a test mail from Orchard and you have like a, a bunch of Orchard tenants running against the same SMTP okay. server and it would be nice to be able to differentiate them. Let's say you are, I don't know, you're an Orchard hosting provider or something or you know you run lots of sites and you want all of the notifications to come to the same place um, or go through the same SMTP service. Yeah, one thing we could do is uh, use the IP, like a notification was sent from this machine, from this user, to this email, so people, at least if we receive emails from things like this, we know that it's coming from the side, I don't know. Mm, yeah, that'd be good. Okay, Hermes, go on, find something. Um, so I updated the roadmap with the stuff that was done, and I changed the roadmap. I'm very mean. Uh, so, um, indexing, missing settings, actually, now settings are there, but it's missing some settings still. Home page is done. Um, settings, once the, the PR is merged, I will put it in the done. I changed the, the goals for this uh, thing. I want to work on menu uh, because, again, I'm trying to, to see uh, what will be missing for a simple site, and I think menu is very important. If you can't render a menu, you are... Uh, stuck, uh, and I'd like to to try also live preview. Uh, should not be that hard. Uh, I will see with uh, Chris uh, what what the issue is in Orchard One, and um, that will prevent us from making editors like a Markdown editor that will need to render the things on the editor. If we have like preview, you can say, okay, we don't care. Type HTML and you'll see it on the right, and that will be fine. So that's, that's my goals. Um, and then next step will be the big things, the important and hard things, layout, widget, taxonomies, media library, and projections. Crazy. Um, good. Questions? Oh, yes. There is no meeting on Thursday. It's Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was actually wondering about that. No meeting. 
Okay, cool. If you have things to for me to check or to to merge everything, send me an email, send me a note, ping me on Gitter. I will try to do the peer merge before Thursday this way. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, personally, the the only really priority one is that one to fix the regex expressions. Okay. Well, I can. I will merge it today. I just click a button. Because the, I mean, the way they are now, the you cannot create a tenant otherwise. Okay. I will fix it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to talk about the reflection thing, just tell me when. I will look at it and suggest something on the PR. Okay, cool. Thank you. Other questions? Are you uh, accepting submissions for talks for Harvest yet? Uh, yes, there is a form. You can file it or you can send emails. Ah, okay. Good. That works too because in the end it's the same thing. Actually, the emails don't work right now. Uh, I have to check with Sipke, the DNS. I have a DNS issue, but he, he helped me last time, but he didn't fix anything. Um, it's not his fault, it's mine. Um, but you can send emails otherwise. To you? To me, or t yes, because you can send it to, I don't know, Janos, but he won't do anything. But yes, me is good. And uh, Or you can go in the guitar room if you want to talk, or Skype, or whatever, you know. Yep. Okay, but the form should work. I haven't thought about it actually yet. So, but uh, yeah, but the form works. It's still there. Um, okay, done. Other questions I need to answer in the chat. Or oh, Antoine answered them already. Yeah, maybe I have one quick. The, do, do you still need to have uh, the localizable at route settings in O2, or it's something that get replaced by the handleable tokens? This, so localizable auto route. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Like a route per culture. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think we can do it with we can do it with tokens. I assume. Let's try it. I think we can do it with tokens. Let me know. Yeah, you made it. I think for one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you need it for yeah, if you need it for or two, uh, let, let me I know. Have, I haven't started on localization, and I think I will do it. I will do localization later. I will wait for uh, Matteo and Hermes to finish everything on the one, and then do the same thing on the two. Um, and um, and Autoraj with the with handlebars, we should be able to do conditions and everything, or reuse. Yeah. Okay. We can we can check like if culture is null or things like I'm just pseudo coding, but you can check if there is a culture, then use it. Otherwise, use this template. You can have two templates in one template. Yeah, so, because uh, yeah, and all I, bar is better. Yeah, and and I prefer this way than having to implement a feature that is prone to failure. So if we can use the token, because we have a token here, let's use a token. We'll try. We, we can try that. Okay. Good question. Okay. Find an issue so we don't forget about it. Can we use tokens for um, cultured, culture aware auto routes? Good, good. So, if no other question, then um, see you next week, guys. Have a happy Thanksgiving.